All right, everybody. Excited to be here on a Friday afternoon. This is This Pink Cloud, if you're tuning in, and it is Season 2, Episode 28. Yay! Hey, so excited to have these ladies in the house. Uh, I am DJ Kelly Reaver, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, this would be Stephanie Ann Crawford. Or Stephanie Renee Crawford. Sorry. Stephanie Crawford. I, I already, fine. Stephanie Crawford. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to go full name, you know, yeah. And uh, your social security number is, <laughs> right? And then An- Ainsley yeah. Chapman. How many times do people mess up their name? Oh, every well, day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, my, my wife's name is Waverly. Oh, yeah. And, and it always gets to be Beverly. Yeah. Like, so when we go to Chick fil A, I'm like, okay, say your name, babe. And then by the time it gets to the end of the line, oh, yeah. it's Beverly. Yeah, Yeah. I get my last name before I got married was David. And so I get a lot of mail addressed to Mr. David Ainsley. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I get the whole uh, Mrs. Kelly Partridge. Oh, yeah. 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 So you get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel you. I feel you. But they are with uh, Magdalene House, a.k.a. Maggie's House, some people call it. But uh, we are going to talk to them here in just a second. Excited to have them on the show. Real quick, I want to hit our uh, sponsor, which is summersky.us. If you look right above my head, there is the web address and the phone number, which is 888-857-8857. Once again, that is summersky.us, 888-857-8857. I went there. It worked for me. I'm over a year plus sober. Yay. And uh, a year. And uh, let me look at my app. I'm like, uh, and 16 days. Yay. Um, so that, and also want to uh, plug the YouTube channel. If you go to uh, thispinkcloud.com, uh, that'll take you to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe or you're a bad person. <laughs> and then also we'll, uh, uh, I guess, if, do you have the shirts, Brett? Do you have those ready? By the way, Brett is my new favorite board op. He is like always on point and, and somewhat of a genius, people might say. But uh, anyway, uh, there's the uh, the magic pill shirt, uh, and then we also have the uh, the chair shirt, the old I went to rehab and all I got was my life back, and then the uh, standard this pink cloud shirt. Uh, all those are actually available at um, djkellyreverb.com forward slash shop. Uh, all the proceeds go to benefit the show, so if you dig the show, support. Um, and other than that, y'all have a lot of exciting stuff. I know you guys are like, oh, this is like old hat to you, except it's live yeah. <laughs> and there's no editing, but y'all do, y'all both, uh, have a, a webcast that you are a podcast. Y'all do, excuse me. Yes. Um, yeah, there's like, I, I call mine a digital show. It's all fancy because we do the cameras <laughs> and everything. But uh, what is, if, if people want to tune into your, your podcast, what is that address? I want to get that out there. Yeah, you just search the Magdalene House podcast on anywhere you listen to podcasts. So we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, anywhere. Uh, and we have different series. So our series that uh, comes out on every Wednesday is Recovered, Interviews with Alcoholic Women. Okay. So I get the pleasure of interviewing alcoholic women in recovery, and they get to share their story and their hope and their experience. Cool. We also have Hope for the Family, uh, which I get to interview family members, which is a lot of fun uh, to get to hear their side and their perspective. I, I like that. I, yeah, I mean, I love to hear that because, you know, we, we always, being in the rooms, as we as you say, uh, we get to hear everybody's story, but we don't really get to hear the Al-Anon side right. of things, you know? Yeah, so. and, and we want to give hope to the family members as well. We have a great family support group. Um, uh, that meets at the Magdalene House, and so we want to know that we want to let them know the fam, let the families know that they can recover as well. Right, I got you. You would have edited that out. Right? I totally <laughs> would have edited that out. <laughs> See, but it's all so good. much pressure. It's I know. All good. I it's know. All good. So basically, um, yeah, I I love what the Magdalene House is doing. I love a good five hundred one uh, C three. Did I get that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and and y'all, you guys are a nonprofit. But what I like to do on the show is basically kind of go down the line and 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 basically, hopefully, you know, you tell your story as much of it as you want. Like I said, you don't, you don't have the fourth step with me here, but um, you know, and just tell me, you know, where, um, you know, where 
where it went wrong, where it went right, and what's working for you. And hopefully, you know, somebody out there listening, uh, we inspire somebody. So uh, who wants to go first? You're looking at Do <laughs> 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 you want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I'll uh, get, it, get it out of the way. <laughs> Y'all are like the Chip and, D- Chip and Dale on the, the <laughs> Disney cartoon. No, 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 no. After you. No, no, no. I insist. Yeah. Okay. So Ainsley, hit us with the uh, hot fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I never, I don't know where to even start. Um, you know, I guess I'll just start with um, a little bit of my background and kind of where I grew up and where I came from. Um, I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. I have an amazing family. I, you know, I grew up with a great childhood. Are you an OU fan? Oh, you for uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, we'll oh. let that slide. Uh oh, but that's okay. That's okay. okay, that might be a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, I think like half of my family went to OU. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, I had a pretty normal upbringing. Sure. Um, you know, and we had problems, and there's been divorce in my family. Um. But you know, who hasn't really gone right, through that? Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I started drinking and doing drugs too when I was about 14. Mm -hmm. Um, and never normally, you know, never, I I know a lot of people who started out as kind of normal drinkers and it progressed later into alcoholism. Um, I was the kind of person that as soon as I picked up a drink, you were just go for it. It was, yeah. And you know, when I was 14, it was funny and I was having fun. You oh know? yeah, look at cute little Ainsley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And it just wasn't that big of a deal. Although, you know, I did get in trouble and there were some consequences, but you know, I just thought I'll grow out of it. You right. know, this yeah. is a moment in time. It's and a phase. Yeah, I thought sure. it was totally a phase. And I also just remember, you know, I, I remember taking my first shot of vodka um, and and feeling like this is it. Like I have found the thing, like this is my identity (laughs) now, you know, I, I loved the way that it made me feel and I wanted that all the time. Sure. Um, and so I didn't know, I knew that I had, I, I couldn't control my drinking, but I thought it was just because I was young and all of that. Um, so fast forward, you know, a few years, um, I ended up moving to North Carolina with my dad and my stepmom. I think I was about 16 or 17 years old. And really, I thought, you know, if I change my environment and I start fresh Mm. and I can go somewhere where nobody knows me and just. I love that one. Yeah. Just relocate. So much hope. Yeah. You're going to leave all your problems behind. Yeah. That I can just start over and no one will know all the bad things that I did before when I was drinking. Um, and that, like most people, you know, it didn't work for me. Sure. I, I always started these times where I would move somewhere new and get into this new environment and have all of this hope and feel like, okay, things are looking up. Like, this is going to be good. And it's like, before I knew it, I was spiraling. Right. Um, and I remember the first time that anyone ever approached me about really having a problem um, was when I was 18 years old. And I remember sitting in the garage with my dad and um i had just been binge drinking that whole summer my senior year of high school and he was like do you think now binge drinking are we just talking weekend weekend warrior stuff i mean every day all day oh so yeah (laughs) so (laughs) like in my life so your binge was every day yeah right okay yeah and so um yeah, my dad approached me and was like, you know, do you think you have a problem? Like, do you think you need to go get help? And my response was, absolutely not. You know, sure. I I just need to get out of this small town. I need to go to college. Like, once I'm there, then I'll be okay. Right. That's going to right the ship. Yeah. yeah so um, Cause, so cause I did. Know, nobody parties in college, right? Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I know. It's such like delusional logic. thinking yeah. that yeah. when I go to college, I'm going to, yeah. like, chill out. No. Um, and so, yeah, I went to college and same thing, you know, I started there a lot of hope. I was doing really well. I was making, you know, pretty good grades. And then before I knew it, it was like, how did this happen again? Um, just spiraling out of control. Sure. And, um, so I dropped out of college. I was trying to go back to school and I was kind of in and out trying to figure my life out, you know, and I think. For that time in my life, like the one word I can use to describe who I was was just lost. You know, mm. I didn't know 
who I was. I was so unhappy. I, the only thing I knew to well, do. And it sounded like you tried to hit that reset button several so times. So many times. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And so, um, you know, eventually I found myself, you know, living in North Carolina. I had gone there to go to college. I had dropped out. Now I'm working at a gas station and I can't pay my bills and my roommates hate me and I'm in all this trouble. And, um, my parents were like, we're getting you out of there. You know, Mm -hmm. you've got to get out of there. And so again, here I go. My parents at that time had moved to Texas. My dad came here for work. And so I was like, yeah, that's it. You know, I need to move. I need to start over. Another relocation. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that this would be the time, you know, this would be it. Um, when I moved to Texas, that's when um, I think just getting a little bit older and I started seeing people that I thought drank like me growing up, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it was a phase for them and I couldn't get it together. Mm-hmm. And at that point, that's when I really started just hating myself. I became really depressed and suicidal mm-hmm. and... Um, I just hated myself. Sure. Um, so I, I well, can't you get on that, that, you know, like that treadmill and then you're just like, you, you get hopeless. Yeah. Is really what it is. And yeah. That's why we're here. We're here to inspire hope by the way. Right. So anyway. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, let's see, I'm living in Dallas and thinking that things are going to get better. They don't, you know, wherever I went, no matter what I did or who I was with, my drinking continued to get worse and worse and worse, you know, Mm -hmm. and I was constantly looking for this thing, you know, what can I fix in my life that's going to make me so happy that I won't need to drink this way anymore. Sure. You know, and so I I try to fix all of these things. I tried to move around. I tried to switch jobs. I tried to go to different schools. I tried different relationships, you know, and nothing worked. Mm. Um, Nothing was ever enough. And so um, eventually... I got to the point where it it became obvious to everybody around me and myself that it was out of control. You know, I was completely out of control. Um, I was miserable and I had my first opportunity to go to detox and to treatment. Okay. Um, and so I, now did you try to get involved? Like, cause I mean, I personally, I tried to do the, uh, the old, uh, show up to an AA meeting drunk, you know, style. Yeah. And I did that for a while, but that didn't, that didn't quite cut it for me. So did yeah. you have any experience with AA prior to, or no. 12 steps? Yeah, me. no, I didn't. I actually, I got introduced to the 12 steps after going through treatment after and a detox, okay. yeah, I, I had no interest in that. Right. <laughs> you know, well, I was course, like, that's, yeah. weird. Well, that's weird. That's lame. I don't yeah, want to, what is that cult? About? Yeah. Cause <laughs> I, you know, and I didn't want to do something for a lifetime. I sure. just wanted to go and detox and get fixed and move on with my life. Right. Exactly. You know? And, and just, you're, just, you're just healed like that. And yeah. And just be a normal what, person. What, yeah. What if it's being an alcoholic? Yeah. That? No. Yeah forever no yeah right um so, so did you you did a medical detox I now did, did yeah. you just do like a 10 day or so i went to a detox for i think i was there for close to a week okay and then i was supposed to go to treatment after sure and the place that i went didn't offer like residential treatment so um and basically my insurance was like we're not covering any more of this uh, and so we kind of scrambled you know where are we going to go Wh- what am i going to do right. um and actually they threw out the magdalene house to me mm-hmm. and it was like oh it's all women and it's 12 step bait and i was like that's no. lame yeah women and, <laughs> right. and this girl that i went to treatment <laughs> with was like i know this other place and it's, you know, men and women, you can uh-huh. have your cell phone, they let you go places. And I was like, that's where I want to go. <laughs> right. You know, of that, course. Yeah. You that need sounds your, fun. You need your social avenues open. Yeah. yeah right. So um, I did that. I, I detoxed and then I went into this other treatment center. And, you know, looking back, I. I definitely wasn't there for the right reasons. I definitely was not ready to quit for good. I just wanted to 
get everybody off my back, and I wanted to little a little summer camp for yeah. uh, alcoholics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I just needed to get away. Right. I used yeah. treatment as kind of a, a way to escape problems for a little bit sure. too. Um, and so I went to this rehab, and I was there for about a week. I was supposed to be there for thirty days, and um, I remember after a week, I called my mom and I said. I'm ready to go. You know, right. this yeah, is I'm good. Yeah. This is great. Like I, she was like, please stay, please stay. Right. And I was like, no, here's the thing. I don't even want to drink. Right. Well, of course. So yeah. if I don't want to drink, then I should be good. <laughs> right. Like right. I'm better. I don't even want to drink. Um, right. And plus I have an apartment I need to go home to. I have a dog. I have a boyfriend. I have all these things. I need to get back to my job. Um, I need to go be a responsible person. Right. <laughs> um, and so I did. I left. So I left treatment little, in the middle went, of the night. You went a little AMA on us? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and they, you know, I talked to a therapist there, and she was like, Ainsley, you know, please stay. You know, sure. the things that you were doing, like, you're a little person. You, I don't know if you're going to survive. Right. Um, and I was like, no. And at the time, like, I wasn't lying. I truly thought, I'm going to be fine. I don't want to do this anymore. I, I learned my lesson. I learned enough here, and now I'm ready to move on. Um I was drinking that night, you know, mm. I, I went home and even though you didn't want to, even, even though, though you, I even didn't though you want to, <laughs> yeah. Um, and a week later I'm back in that same treatment facility uh, yeah. because it didn't take long for it to just, you know, get completely out of hand. Yeah. It just went back to old habits. Real yeah, quick. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I go back to treatment. This time I'm like serious, you okay. know, I'm going to do it. I'm really committed. I finish the 30 days. I go into sober living, like things are looking up. Um, and I remember coming home from a meeting or something one day and my roommate was, and I'm just miserable. Like mm -hmm. I'm still sober, but I am so unhappy. Like I, I feel like I'm always on the verge of crying because right. I'm just so uncomfortable all the time. Um, and a roommate of mine was like, you need to get a sponsor and start working the steps. And mm -hmm. I was like, where do I get that? What is this? And so right. she referred me to somebody and I started working with her and she was amazing. Um, but, you know, I got to a point where I felt like I don't really need to do this anymore. Mm. I'm feeling good. Life is good. I got my job back. I'm, you know, things are, I didn't think that I would have to do this forever. Right. Um, and so eventually I started drinking again mm -hmm. and it got to the point, you know, at the time I was working in a salon and we served alcohol. Nobody, nobody parties there. No, right? yeah. yeah. And it's right. really rare. Yeah. I'm one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was working at a salon and we um, served alcohol. And I remember this before I started drinking again that I was clearing off, you know, people's wine glasses and I, somebody didn't finish their wine. And I remember <laughs> having to pour it down the sink and just <laughs> crying. Right. I was so, I needed that drink so bad. And sure. I knew everyone around me knew I was supposed to be sober and it was painful. Oh yeah. And so I finally had convinced myself, like, I don't need to be in sober living. I'm not like all these people I live with. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to move on. And so, um, before I moved out, I started drinking again and I knew if I get caught, I'm going to get kicked out, you know, mm -hmm. I have nowhere to live. Um, oh yeah. And they UAE and BAE all the time. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah. And so what happened is I, I started drinking again and I started just planning my whole day and my whole life and everything around how am I going to be able to drink tonight, stay out of my sober living house with enough time to be able to come uh, back, pass the drug yeah. test. I need to get the take daily the drug pass. Test, yeah. I need to get pass the passport. Yeah. yeah. So it was still, it was still like I always, uh, you know, refer to and a lot of people do is their alcoholism as a job because oh, it yeah. really is. Like, I mean, all the planning that you mm -hmm. have that goes into it, just a effing drink. Yeah. It I consumed mean, yeah. every. Yeah thought, you yeah. know, whether it was thinking about, okay, what time am I going to be able to get my next drink? Am I going to have enough money? What time is right. the store closed? Like uh, this thought of like, wh how am I going to get it? How am I going to get it? How am I going to get it and get sure. away with it? Or what am I going to do today to not drink? Okay. I'm going right. to keep myself so busy that I don't think about drinking. I'm going to start doing yoga. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to call somebody, all these things. 
Um, and eventually, like, that just didn't work for me, and I drank again. Mm-hmm. And what happened was, you know, I said to myself, like, I'm going to go and have three drinks. That's mm-hmm. it. Oh, I'm yeah. going to have three. It felt like a good number. I don't know. Um, and so I went out, and I had three drinks at this bar with some friends from work. And then I was like, oh, that was great. Like, I did such a good job. And so I get in a <laughs> cab to go back to my sober living house after having <laughs> these three drinks. And this thought occurs, like, well, if I had three, like now I want more and I have a friend that I went to rehab with and I know he's drinking. And so long story short, I end up, uh, you know, chugging a handle of vodka in a motel room until I pass <laughs> out, waking up in the morning, and rolling what, over what and was finishing the, What it. was the random town or was it in Dallas? <laughs> it was in Dallas. I, I think we were in I, like Mesquite or something. I wound up in something. like Dimebox, Texas yeah. in a motel, uh, yeah. the Thunderbird Motel. And, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and just waking up in the morning and going right after it again yeah. um, and thinking after that, like, oh, my God, like, right. what, what have I done? Sure. This is not what I intended to do. I right. just wanted to have a couple drinks, you know. Um, and then I, I didn't stop in. You know, I ended up moving out of my sober living house and just staying with some friends and just drinking, you know, just mm-hmm. that was it. That was all my life was. And I. I I remember kind of getting to the point where it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't fun for a long time before this, but at this point, like I had to drink to just walk out the door. Yeah, just to physically function. Yeah, yeah. I I wasn't drinking to get drunk. I wasn't even drinking to feel good. Like I was drinking to get normal. Oh yeah, drinking, I always say drinking to right the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) and so, that's what would, ha- you know, I'd wake up in the morning and I would do that. I, would, I, would, I just need to have like one shot to, you know, be All able right. to do this. Um, sure. And then before I'd know it, I'd be, you know, drunk at work right. that same day. And like, what happened? And so that kept happening over and over and over. And then um, the last day, night, I guess, of my drinking, I remember um, sitting, <laughs> laying on the bathroom floor of this apartment I was staying in. And uh-huh. I am in tears, you know, sobbing. And I remember I'm drinking out of this bottle. And at the same time as I'm drinking, I'm thinking, I don't want to be doing this. And I'm still doing it. Like, I I can't stop. And I thought, I'm losing my mind. Like, I'm going crazy. What is this? Like, I am an insane person. And just crying on the floor and praying to God, like, I am too scared to kill myself, so just take me. Mm. Just yeah. in that, this for that me. That level of desperation is awful to be yeah. there. And yeah. so it's like in that same moment, I called my mom <laughs> and my poor mom. Um, and my mom has a lot of education around alcoholism and addiction and um, just from our family history. And so I called her and I was like, Mom, you know, what is wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And she was like, you're an alcoholic. Mm. Not in a judgmental way, right. not in a bad way. It was just like matter of fact, like, well, yeah, this is what it is. You're an alcoholic. And by the and way, it, in case you didn't know. Yeah, and you're it was an just like this light bulb went off, like, right. oh my God, you uh, know, I have this thing. Like, I don't know exactly so what it, it is. So it sounds like you kind of like you, you uh, like admitted to yourself, like at that moment, you yeah. finally realized. That, okay, I am powerless over alcohol. Exactly. Right. Like, I had my step one experience. Yeah. I, I realized, like, if I don't do something drastic, like, I'm going to do this forever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to drink no matter what, even when I don't want to. Mm-hmm. And when I start, I can't stop. And then I don't know what I'm going to do at that okay. point. You know, and so the um, woman that had previously sponsored me um, – actually worked at the Magdalene house. And so I called her that night and I said, what do I do? She said, call Maggie's. I said, Mm -hmm. okay. And that kind of started my journey of just saying, what do I do? Someone giving me instructions and me following them. Sure. So I picked up the phone. I called Maggie's. They approved me to come in. I went the next day. Um, And so that's how I got (laughs) involved at the Magdalene house as I started my, you know, real recovery journey through that house. And it's all been unicorns and rainbows. Oh, yeah. It's been in (laughs) in the end. Everything's been perfect. (laughs) Um, And that's so funny. Like, I was thinking, um, I watched this movie the other day about um, kind of the treatment industry. But I was thinking, like, all these Hollywood movies about recovery just talk about, like, all the bad things that happened 
this person, you know, they're they're using or they're drinking, and then uh-huh. at the end of the movie, they get sober and they're happy. And you're like, what did they do? Like, how did right? They, um, <laughs> yeah, they leave s- out all the. You actually have to live a life after right. <laughs> after sobriety, yeah, yeah. And, and you have to learn to deal <laughs> with the uh, with your problems sober, yeah, and stuff how like do I that. Do that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. so I feel like that's kind of where the well, real story begins. It's like, what did I do, and how did I get to Okay, well, I'm now, gonna. I want to put you on pause yeah. because you know we have to get to uh, Stephanie because you know she's been a mic hog this whole time, you know. Oh. <laughs> but Steph, so like, um, yeah, let's see, let's hear uh, your story um, if we can do it in about 15 minutes because I want to get to uh, talking about the good stuff, which is Maggie's house and the Magdalene house. But yeah. uh, let's hear your story. All right. Well. Um my name is Stephanie. Hi, uh, Stephanie. Hi. I like um, we're in a and I've been sober since May 13, 2016, and um, that is absolutely a miracle. Yeah, I yeah. hold on, ne- you just made me do math. So five, <laughs> I just <laughs> celebrated five, five years. Okay, cool. Uh, and Ainsley just celebrated how many? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like it. And uh, definitely a miracle. I never ever thought that that would happen. You know, I started drinking when I was twelve which terrifies me because my daughter is 12. Yeah. Um, And I remember after my first drink, I said, I never want to be sober again. And so from then on out, you know, any opportunity I could, I drank. And and at age 14, I started getting negative consequences as a direct result of my drinking. And what I didn't know at the time is, like, my body does not process alcohol normally. And so anytime I put alcohol in my body – my body would demand more. And here I was thinking that I was just changing my mind every single time and I didn't have any willpower. And I remember being like 14, 15 years old, like writing in my diary being like, I'm not going to get wasted this this weekend. I'm only going to have this much. I mean, that was like 14, 15 well, Yeah, years that's old. normal. Like when, yeah, when, when, totally, girls, are, totally when normal. girls are writing stuff about yeah. Justin Bieber. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and every single time it did not happen. Do you still have your diaries? No. Oh, no that would that'd be, be cool. cool I know, back, right? right? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I wrote everything in there. Right. Um, and so, like, that kind of continued until... You know, I was thinking the first time anybody intervened on me, I was 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a freshman in college. I was like, everybody parties in college. Um, And I kept going until I was until I got pregnant with my daughter. Okay. Uh, I was 19 when I got pregnant with my daughter. And, um, you know, I was able to stop drinking. And after she was born, like my whole life became centered around taking care of this perfect baby girl right um and i really didn't drink that much at all um because all i cared about was taking care of her until her dad and i split up around two years old and then all of a sudden Uh, i had like every other weekend and all this free time and i did what any woman in their early 20s does at single is i went to the bar sure and it catched up really quick Mm -hmm. um and i will say that like i I always get nervous um, sharing about stuff because a lot of it involves my daughter, um, and I'm, like, afraid that somehow the dance moms or PTA moms of oh, Plano yeah, are going to catch yeah, me yeah, on yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> but I would much rather give a— But, you you know, the thing is, and, and I love it that you guys are so open about this, is, you know, I mean— Screw what people think about mm-hmm. you. Is it, what if you help somebody? That's I mean that's know? exactly that's, what I was going to say. That's the bottom line for me. It's, and the thing is, is the you know the the CDC, you know, says that alcohol it classifies it as a disease. Absolutely. So if we can't talk about the you know our cancer, our version of cancer, then yeah, you know? no, I, <laughs> I completely agree. And you know, I would much much rather give hope to a mother there you go. and let her know that she's not a terrible mother, uh, that she's sick and she can get better, than have someone. Yeah, who maybe one of those soccer mo- Maybe one of those yeah. soccer moms is gonna walk up to you and go, "Hey, Stephanie, yeah. uh, how do you do it?" You know. Well, you know. I, I'm. You know, I will say too. I'm glad that that you brought that up because. Um, I started using, like, my addiction really took off 
uh, after her dad and I split up and I discovered uh, prescription amphetamine pills. Mm -hmm. And I took that because I wanted to be a superstar mom. Dude, I speed wanted to Anna, be speed the, Anna alcohol yeah, is a great thing. Yeah, I wanted to be the, yeah. the superstar mom. I wanted to stay thin. And so in my mind, it was like, I have to do these things if I want to be a good mom. Right. You know, and at first it worked for a little bit. Um, and then, you know, it. Ste <laughs> Stephanie, you have the cleanest house on the block. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And we had arts and crafts. I mean, it was on, okay? Right. Um, and my daughter will still be like, Mom, remember when we had stations? I was like, yeah, I was super high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, you know, that's, but that's really why I started, you know? Sure. And after a while, you know, it got really, really bad. And, um, you know, to speed things up, I always, I started trying to get sober at 22. Mm -hmm. I didn't get sober until I was 27. Um, and I really thought that I was going to be able to stop for my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, I was super judgmental of moms who had lost their kids or anything like that, thinking they must not love their kids. How can sure. you not stop for your kids? Um, and then I learned the hard way that like those women didn't have a choice like I didn't have a choice it wasn't mm -hmm. that I loved my daughter any less like I was going to pick up no matter what and there was no consequence that was enough to make me stop and stay stopped mm -hmm. and so you know it got to the point where my daughter's five years old and she's coming downstairs in the morning and she sees her mom passed out uh with a bottle of wine and a bottle of pills mm. you know and she's having to take care of her mom how old is she how old is she five five wow. yeah she's in kindergarten yeah. the sweetest little girl yeah um, and so her dad has to come get her because I can't take care of her. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, you know, like, um, I'm going without electricity at times, you know, going mm -hmm. without food at times, you know, selling everything that I own, uh, cause I'm not working and can't hold a job. You know, I give props to people who can be quote unquote functioning alcoholics. Oh, yeah. That is not me. Right. Uh, I am not functioning. I go down quick and, um, and I'm grateful for that today. Mm -hmm. But so... You know, um, her dad comes and gets her and takes her to Texas. And I'm so grateful for that today uh, because he he saved her and he he protected her. And right. um, and, and you didn't in intentionally put her in a bad environment. No, you were no. just in a, in a spot where you you had no control over. The Absolutely. Substance yeah. yeah. Like I had I have a mind that tells me that like, oh, it's okay, you're gonna mm -hmm. take this prescription as prescribed this time. Mm -hmm. You're only gonna have one glass of wine, mm -hmm. you know? And I believed it, you know? Like, we're not in denial, we're in delusion. Like, we actually believe this stuff. And- uh, Hold on, let me process that. Yeah. We're not in denial. Okay. Okay. Got it. I just <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, her dad takes her, and I do wanna mention this part. I, um, I was in an abusive relationship Mm -hmm. And um, the relationship got pretty bad. And the reason why I bring this up is because there was one night where I came to and I was like, I'm never going to see my daughter again uh, because I'm going to die. I'm going to die in this relationship. And um, I was like, God, if you let me live, I will leave him. And so that night um, I left I escaped for like the last time and uh, after a series of circumstances, I got a one-way ticket on a mega bus with one bag packed and, head, and headed to Dallas. I had no idea what I was gonna do when I got here. I didn't know anyone. I just knew that like if I stayed- Where were you coming from? Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and so I just knew that if I stayed there, I was gonna die and I was never gonna see my daughter again. Right. And so like that was up to that point, like the scariest thing I've ever done. Um, and I say that because I could leave an abusive relationship after time, um, get on a mega bus and go to a city that I've never been before, knowing nobody, knowing nowhere I was going to live because I wanted, because I was afraid of never seeing my daughter again, but I couldn't stop drinking and using for my daughter. Sure. Like, and so that's how powerless I was over this thing. And, um, and so, you know, what started off as the, you know, wanting to be superstar mom ends up homeless with no shoes, uh, in and out of psych wards, Green Oaks alumni right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and not seeing my daughter and, you know, doing drugs I never thought I would do, being in mm -hmm. places I never thought I would be, and to where I finally, um, you know, end up at the 24 hour club. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I got sober. 
in the old building. Right, and, and shout out to the Twenty Four Hour Club yes, on Ross. Yes, uh, and I love I love the Hubcap Cafe. Nice. They have a killer quesadilla. So. And, and really pancakes. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and pancakes. Yes. yes. Yeah, but they're great. Yeah. So anyway, shout out to them. Yes, and I remember getting there. You know, like after being homeless and everything, like that place was paradise, right? I was how like, did you How did you find the Twenty Four Hour Club if you're just wandering around? And somebody goes. Well, hey, I mean, there was that. like I got here in January. I didn't get sober until May, so uh-huh. I had you know experience a window, between a, a window of there. exploration. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know I. Poor Tinder guys that I took advantage of. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, you know, I... Um, That's a different show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I was... So I, I did a lot of exploration. And um, and somehow I ended up at uh, Turtle Creek back whenever they took women. And yeah, for sure. some reason, Turtle Creek wouldn't take me. I think this was after another suicide attempt or something. They transferred me over to Turtle Creek. And they couldn't take me at Turtle Creek, and somebody was like, hey, I'm going to this place called the 24-Hour Club. Do you want to go? Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Sure. I don't have any money. Right. I have nothing. Um, all these other sober livings, they want money. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. I, what drug addict has money, not me. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but, and so I went there, and you know, luckily they let me in with nothing. Um, and I was so happy to be there. They let me shop in the clothes closet. They gave me a toothbrush. They let me brush my teeth. They let me take a shower. Everyone was laughing. They were talking about this obsession being removed, and I knew nothing of the obsession being removed. I knew Mm. nothing of being happy in sobriety, Um, and that's what gave me hope for the first time. Sure. Um, But since my ego regenerates very quickly, (laughs) I forgot about being homeless and everything, Um, and, you know, got drunk a week later. Right. Uh, But after that, you know, it was one day, I remember the program manager coming in. He said, Stephanie, if you can stay sober for 72 hours, we'll keep your bed. And I just started crying. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can stay sober for 72 hours. And that was like the first time that I was really honest. I knew Mm. that I wanted to, but I didn't know if I could. And, um, well, I think we all want to at some right. point. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I always say, like, whenever people, God bless them, they, that don't understand alcoholism, they're like, you just got to really want it. I was like, uh, okay. I mean, look, look, <laughs> look I, yeah, I, I don't I, want no, to be homeless. I, I don't, <laughs> right. I, you know, and I don't take anything away from that. I mean, will and desire plays a part in my sobriety because I do get tested. But that's just not it. It's right. not it's willpower. It's much more. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. If willpower was enough, we wouldn't all be. Yeah, yeah. we, we wouldn't be in this exactly. room right now. Right. You know. Exactly. Um, and so, I know that was like whenever I remember he I, he said to me, Stephanie, that breaks my heart because this is a beautiful life. Mm-hmm. And like that is what spoke to me um, because I knew nothing of a beautiful life. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lost. I was lonely. I was miserable. Um, you know, and I didn't care about sobriety if I had to be miserable. Like, tell me that I don't have to live this way anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he told me that I didn't have to, and I knew that he meant it. And um, and that's what started my journey off. Uh, yeah. Over five years ago, and here that's I am. That's great. Today. No, but I mean that's great. And then so you so you went to Twenty Four Hour Club, and then how did you? Uh, merge pass with uh, Maggie's house. So after I got sober um, and they, I, you know, just kind of moved on with my life and I, you know, created a great life for my daughter and for myself. Uh And um, they started opening up the new building. Mm -hmm. And so I got a phone call asking if I would come work for them. And I was Mm -hmm. said, absolutely. That's amazing. Um, and then I got pregnant with my son. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And, um, and so that's what I did. So I, I quit working there and, uh, some things happened because like we already talked about life does happen in sobriety. Sure. And I found myself to be in a situation to where I was a single mom again. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, not knowing where I was going to live and all this other stuff. And, um, and I'm freaking out, being like, what am I going to do? <laughs> right. But I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that God always took care of me and it was going to work out. And um, and when I'm one day, I'm just searching for jobs and I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to work anywhere where I want to work. And, fi- and you know, I get a text message from Chloe saying, are you still looking for a job? And I was like, yes. All right. 
and I went and I interviewed with Ainsley and Chloe and um, and I'm so grateful. That's I mean, so cool, man. Yeah. It was. I love, love, love my job. It well, I am so glad you're not homeless again. I know, right? <laughs> you know, my ego, though, it can, like, I'll be like, oh, my apartment's too small. Right. Um, and it's like, like girl, wait, like, yeah. six years ago, you uh, didn't have an apartment and you were homeless, you know? You, it's were, just on funny. A, you were on a bus from yes. St. Louis I, to... Dallas. Mega and, bus. Uh, yeah. At that. <laughs> a mega bus. You gotta, yeah. Isn't that the, like what they take to casinos or something? I don't know. I'll never get on <laughs> one again, God willing. <laughs> right? Well, so, okay, so, like, uh, I love that, that y'all have, uh, you know, that background, and thank you for sharing that with uh, with everybody here but um let's talk about like uh the magdalene house which i'm going to go ahead and give their website or web address out which is the magdalene house.org or not the magdalene house.org magdalene house.org correct yes. and that is m-a-g-d-a-l-e-n house.org and then some I, I mean if you look up the magdalene house you'll probably see y'all's podcast as well right Yes, so um, if you search on our website, if you go to our website, we do have a page for a our link podcast. For it. Okay, mm -hmm. cool, yes. cool, cool. Yes. Um, so, but like, let's talk about it. Like, I mean, okay, you know, you. Were, it's funny that you say because there are certain um, sober, you know, like the the nonprofits that are strictly guys, strictly girls, okay. strictly guys, which I think is cool because honestly. You know, when it is just men or just women, you have a, a more of a chance to focus yeah. on, um, you know, your sobriety and what you're there for yeah. than like, oh, my God, I got to do my hair because the hot guy is going to be <laughs> oh, yeah. at this guy <laughs> and <laughs> at this at this yeah. meeting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, OK, so Maggie's House is, is about uh, it, it's an organization for uh, alcoholic women. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, is it okay if they're polys? Like, I mean, is, as long as alcohol is their main focus or can they also have, you know, other addictions like CA or like cocaine or, or anything like that? Or what's the, yeah. what's the skinny? Well, so I will let Ainsley answer that question about social detox and then I'll talk about it for next step. Okay. Yeah, that. because so we do have, you know, we have two programs and for social detox, which is, you know, the first one that normally people come into, um, but they don't have to come into that first. Um, your primary addiction has to be alcohol. So mm -hmm. the number one thing that you go to is alcohol. And reason being, you know, that's what we talk about. You know, we, sure. we provide an environment where everyone's coming in with the same problem. Mm -hmm. Whatever your background is or where you're coming from, we all have this one thing in common. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, the detox from that. We can tailor our program to this. Now, do y'all actually do a medical detox or is we it just a... We do not. Okay, yeah, so. so, and that's a really good question. So we have a hey, social thanks. detox. I just good. Yeah, <laughs> good job. <laughs> um, just meaning that we, we don't do medical. We right, y'all leave that up to the professional, tell them to go to maybe Presby or, right, or somewhere right. like that. Yeah, that so um, before anyone comes, they have to do a phone screen. Uh -huh. And through that, we'll be able to determine if they are a good fit, you know, really physically for the social detox program because sure. we don't do detox medications. Right. We don't have a medical staff. Um, what we do is, you know, we'll give them fluids. We'll take their blood pressure. We'll check on them. We'll make sure they're safe. Um, but we kind of do it the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Yes, alcohol being the primary addiction, um, because that's how we know how to deal with a detox from that. Right, and that's um, why you say a social detox, not a medical exactly. detox. Exactly. Got it. Um, and so, yeah, I think that was all I was going to say about that. And then for the next step. Yes. Stephanie. So for the next step program, it's a, it's the same thing in the sense that, um, you know, it, your, your primary does have to be alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, but... Since we're not detoxing and we're outpatient, um, the it's we don't have as strict of a phone screen process as social detox because at this point we're not detoxing off anything. Mm -hmm. But the primary does definitely have to be alcohol. Okay. So and then y'all also have inpatient as well, right? Or on on site? Or did I just totally miss that? Well, the social detox would be considered 
inpatient or a residential program. Res- residential, yeah. that's then, the word I was looking and for. And then next step is our non-residential program, which, by the way, all of our programs are no cost. Right, so, and I love that. Yes. I mean, it's, yeah, it's totally free, uh, yep. you know, if you qualify. And um, also you were saying, uh, I know the current house is on Gaston, but then you were saying something about a new house. Uh, isn't there a new house coming up? So the new house is the one on Gaston. We, oh, yeah. Okay. So we just moved in there. Way, way to do your few- research, <laughs> Shelly. <laughs> That's okay. Um, we just moved in a few months ago, so it's still really new to us. Okay. We well, it's new to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were located um, right by White Rock Lake in the Arboretum in East okay. Dallas. Right. Um, we'd been in that house since like the mid 90s, I mm-hmm. think, and we've been around since 1987. Um, but we just moved into the new house on Gaston, and it's just amazing. We're so excited to be there. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, our executive director, Lisa Kroenke, she had this uh, vision that I think is absolutely amazing that alcoholic women get pushed to the side and get pushed to the curb too many times and that we all deserve to recover with grace and dignity. And so that right. means a beautiful place, a beautiful home where people can walk in and they can feel like they haven't been pushed to the curb. And it is absolutely amazing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I saw, I actually saw like uh, on the website, I mean, it's a beautiful facility. I'm like, I might, uh, I might go trans just so I can get in there (laughs) if I ever decide to relapse. Well, hopefully, (laughs) yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm just kidding. Just, just joking. But um, so, okay, so if anybody wants to, uh, do, y'all ha- do you have the phone number memorized? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but yeah. uh, uh, what's, the, what's the best way if somebody's looking for help to see if they qualify, what's the best way to reach out to you guys or to admissions? Yeah, so for social detox, you would just need to call 214-324-9261. Um, and then we do- Again? F- Two one four three two four nine two six one. Yeah, ju- that's for the people just listening. Yeah. I have to do that. So no, I feel like a commercial. Yeah, um, right. And we do screening seven days a week. We do admissions seven days a week. The screening process is really quick, so you should know that day if you qualify to come in, mm-hmm. um, and then you should be able to come even as soon as that day if you can make it. Then well, cool. And then I, next step has a different. Number I don't have it memorized, but uh oh, put you on the spot. I know well, the two one four number is you can call that and we will direct we'll connect you. you. We, yeah. we, yes. we, our phone systems are connected, right? Yes, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Well, I appreciate you uh, you guys coming on and sharing, um, and definitely uh, you know want them to uh, listen to your podcast as well because I know how tough it is to get one going, and you're saying all this good stuff and you're spitting fire, and then it's like oh. Nobody's listening yeah. to me. But, you know, I mean, like I said, you know, if you can just help one person, yeah. I think I think it's good. And I, and I love it that y'all are in the industry of helping people. So if you haven't heard it in a while, thank you for what you do. Oh, thank thank you. you, too. Yeah. yeah. But um, let me go ahead and uh, hit my sponsor real quick, which is summersky.us. Uh, and that is 888-857-8857. Once again, that is summersky. Dot US, 888-857-8857. They are in lovely Stephenville, Texas, in the middle of nowhere, where you can get sober. Awesome. <laughs> so anyway, but it worked for me. Uh, real quick, Brett, hit the shirts if you can, sir. Um, uh, there, I, we, uh, I, that, that was not a that was not a picture that was that was dusty uh, we had on dusty burrows last week and there was a picture of him with a possum that was that was not an inappropriate picture if you <laughs> if you were wondering but uh yeah standard shirt um which i got i have for you guys oh cool um and then uh the chair one and the rainbow one but um anyway so all that out of the way, anything else y'all wanted to get to? Am I missing anything? Did we not plug anything? Well, I do want to. Yeah, I do want to mention sure. uh, that we are all about more than just staying sober. Uh, we don't believe that sobriety is enough. So we, what we like to do is we want to see women thrive. We want to see them, you know, live a life where they can be free of alcohol, where they don't have to 
avoid people, places, and things, and, and you know, and avoid triggers where they can be free and go anywhere a free person can go and really thrive in their recovery and thrive in their well, life. And I love I love that because you know it's like people just look at it as oh, if I could only get sober, and right. it's not just that. I mean, no. you know, I mean, there right. are people that just get sober. I'm not saying that that can't happen, right? But it's really what you do after that and what you do to maintain your sobriety and and work your work your program whatever that might be i mean if it's just you know if, if it's a community like maggie's house you know or if it's you know whatever your your 12 step group is or if it's a combination i'm just like more the merrier give it to me I'll put, it's a tool in my toolbox. If I use it, cool. If I don't, then it's still there. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Can't yeah. hurt. Yeah. And, and then, go ahead. I, I was just going to, like, tag on to what you were saying. You know, I feel like I talked a lot about the crappy part about alcoholism, which is, if anybody knows an alcoholic, like, you know that part. Mm -hmm. um, but I really want to be able to give hope that, there is a way to be sober and happy mm -hmm. and not wake up in the morning and try to not drink. You know, what mm -hmm. we can do at Maggie's, the Magdalene House, is really give a lifelong solution sure. that you can live free and happy and rebuild relationships and live this really amazing life. And it takes work and you do stuff every day, but the work becomes like, not I have to, but I get yeah, to. Yeah, this right. amazing purpose that you have well, and helping you, other what people. You, what you're saying is the work becomes your life. Yeah, yeah. And you definitely. get to enjoy your and life. Beautiful you know, life what you put that. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What you put into it, yeah. uh, you know, you get out of it. And uh, if you don't watch it, that uh, <laughs> the efforts will creep back up mm -hmm. on you. Because I've heard that. Uh, we've had that uh, discussion on the show many a time, yeah. you know, yeah. so... But, uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming out. Um, any personal shout-outs? I know I know, y'all have uh, family and kids, right? Yes. Yep. So. I doubt my kids are watching. But, uh, but you know. two and a half, so she's yeah. for sure. Okay. <laughs> Kaden's Wesley, mommy loves you. There you go. <laughs> but that's all I got. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. This Yours one's married over here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Brian's working. I don't think he's watching, but if he is, hey. he He will at some point. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming out. Um, like I said, uh, you know, if you want to listen to their podcast, it's uh, The Magdalene House, um, and that's on any, uh, any of the major formats. Uh, also, uh, you know, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, which is thispinkcloud.com. And I can't thank you all enough for coming out. Y'all been a pleasure. Thank you I'd so love much. if y'all have any events coming up in the future. Definitely let me know because I like to plug, uh, you know, current events and stay fun and and unite the tribes is yes. like what I like to do, yeah. or so to speak. But um, thanks again for coming out. And then um, Brett, I guess we'll wrap it up here with uh, you know there is no magic pill for sobriety because if there was, we would all take too many. <laughs> Awesome. That was fun. Thank you so cool. much. Yeah. yeah.